doing to go out there and build your business. And so today what we really put into play for you is a conversation that Don Wilkinson and I have been having. You know, if you have a workout partner, or you have someone that you mastermind with, maybe you've gone through some information on what is going on in your business and what is happening currently today. But what we have been talking about is what has been going on with ourselves personally and the organization and team. And so sometimes as you're going out there and building your business, you will run across a mental mind block. You'll run across a paradigm, you know, something that maybe, maybe a, a belief that isn't really real, that's showing up over and over and over again. You know, as a child, did you ever hear the phrase, don't talk to strangers? You know, that right there framed us, taught us to be scared to prospect, to be scared to show or introduce a breakthrough product to someone that we maybe just met at Starbucks or at the local Costco or at the local, uh, you know, coffee shop or bookstore. You see, this is all about sharing and endorsing a product that you see tremendous value in. And so what we really wanted to show you this morning was what the industry looks like in traditional business. You see, in the international right now, your business is either going up and to the right, it's maintaining just by kind of being flatlined, or it might have dipped a little bit. But at the end of the day, look at what we have, look at where we're going, and look how we're going to get there. You see, these last 12 to 24 months has been just a ramp-up period through this year, 2016. If you look at what we had to do as a company and look at our leadership, look at our foundation, look at the executives that are running this company to a multi-billion dollar business, we are in the right place at the right time. And so over the last 12 to 24 months, we did see our company launch a new product, launch a new country, but more importantly, we slowed down a little bit to build the infrastructure, to build the systems in place for us to go out through and break through to our next level, our next promotion, our next income bar. And so as you're watching this somewhere in the United States or in North America, you might be thinking to yourself, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go next? How can I take advantage of this? But before we get into the technical aspects or the basics of how to build a business, we got to take care of this first, the six inches between our mind is really where everything begins. And so what I have the opportunity and privilege of doing right now is kicking over to my, one of my best friends in the entire world, someone that I have learned a tremendous amount about life, business, and just overall friendships and relationships. Uh, but this gentleman has gone out there and absolutely blazed a trail. You know, I remember when he first got started in this business and where he has come through this business. And so the conversation that we're going to have next is on how we can really take care of some things that are up there mentally. So I want to bring on to this webinar Mr. Don Wilkinson. Don, are you with us? I'm there, Patty. I'm here. Can you hear me Hello. okay? Beautiful. Well, first of all, hello, everybody. Um, I just love that presentation by Patty. Um, he's so well organized and so well thought out. I mean, that was just amazing, amazing uh, information they put together there. I'm sure that everybody that's watching this is going to want to get copies of that information or slide or get a copy of this uh, webinar. Um, the other thing is, Patty's very thorough about preparing. You'll notice the difference in the contrast between he and I. Mine are written out notes, actually written by somebody else because you wouldn't be able to read my writing. In fact, I couldn't read my writing. Uh, you're going to notice a little difference uh, when it comes to, uh, if you know anything about ADD, ADHD, or any Ds with Hs or As in them, I got them all. Somebody asked me yesterday about that, and I said, I, they, they quit diagnosing me, so I just got them all. So. We're going to get through this. It's going to be great information because it's my own personal experience, which is really easy to share. That's one of the great things about Nerium. We have a great Nerium story, but each person, each one of us individually brings our own story to the table. And that's kind of the whole point for this is that uh, my story is easy to tell because it's mine. So I can tell you exactly uh, what it is and how I, how I got to this point. We're having this conversation. Uh, but I will say this, Patty McCracken uh, a while back, um, you know, started taking me on the road. Uh, many of you remember probably seeing posts about we were doing regionals all over the country and things of that nature. And now we're doing these webinars and things of that nature as well. And, you know, my other mentors are involved in different types of things that they're, they're working with me as well. Um, I'll just say that, you know, doing this right here and, and you know, he listens all the time for, for things that can help the team. And, and then what he saw for me is taking me on the road would actually help a lot in relation to growing me as a leader and individual. And at that particular time in my life, it was a really difficult period, even though I was in Nerium and having success, 
uh, the transition uh, into actually the leadership roles was was something I had to work on a little bit. So now uh, what I was doing was telling Patty uh, about some transitional things I've had in the business. I and mean, we know each other so well, so intimately, and we talk about every detail of our life. I will take issue with one thing. I think it was last uh, week he told me I was his best friend. Now I've just become one of them. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. But I, um, I'm just kidding, Patty. Okay, I, I'm just joking. We got a lot of best friends. But what, what it was, what I was sharing with him, this, this transition that I had happening in my life, and he was taking notes and talking. I didn't know he was. He told me he was afterwards. And that's what I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to share with you just my experience. I hope you find something of value. I'm going to recommend that you uh, grab a pen and a paper because there might be one point that I make, one thing I say, something that unlocks uh, maybe a whole you know, a whole group of ideas or purpose or, or focus that you needed to unlock. And if you miss it by not writing it down, trusting it to memory, um, you know, could make a, a huge difference not only in your life, but also in your business. So I'm just going to suggest you grab a pen and paper in case there's something here. And we might move the, the computer around a little bit because I have my own Vanna White here. For those of you that are old enough to remember Vanna White, where she's going to actually maybe pull up some of these slides or these, uh, these graph back, back here that I did so you can see them more clearly. But to start with, uh, just briefly, my story is that uh, I was a publisher of residential real estate magazines. Now that I can do visuals, I always talk about Homes and Land. You guys have probably seen that. I own eight franchises of that network uh, throughout uh, North, uh, Southern California. Built that up over 20 years, got into that business as a result of some advertising people in my life that I was looking up to and, you know, we, I guess, were mentors to me at that time when I was like 20. And ended up coming into that career and, you know, over time, over 20 plus years, built it into a very successful business as a small business goes. Uh, I don't know, 50 employees, 10 million in revenue, seven figure income at the peak, 2006. And I was really at a place where I was, I was just living a great life. And frankly, <clears throat> it was interesting looking back at that when I look at it today, when everything actually went away and I look back at what was driving me back in those days, there was a lot of things that I reference on an individual call, and I hope it's taken properly to understand some of the words I'm using, but I really look back, and as I evolved into Nerium more and more, and I started looking at what it was when I first came in the business that really drove me. And I remember that uh, very early on, Silver Fisher asked me, one of my uh, other good best friends and mentors, uh, and actually now my roommate, I'll just mention that, He's, uh, we, we have a great place in Irvine, California, but he asked me what it was I wanted with the business when I first meetings. And I didn't really know what to say. I kind of kicked a chair in front of me at a coffee place and said, uh, you know, I want to make a difference. I wanted to win again. And I didn't even know quite what that meant. What does the difference mean? What does winning again mean? And I just knew this, where I was at in my life right then, I was not winning. And I didn't feel like I had had an impact in anybody's lives in the past 20 years because I looked at my life the compilation of it that was over with in 18 months, it was done, it was over, it was gone. And I was sitting there with this guy talking to me about this, this uh, opportunity and just trying to wrap my head around what I wanted and that was what I told him. And what's evolved since then is the clarity that back in those days, even though I love great, I mean, I love uh, you know luxury cars and I had several of them and um, my ex had several of them and, uh, you know, we had the house on the hill, view of the ocean, multi-million dollar home, you know, the five-star lifestyle as one would want. We were living it and I absolutely loved it. I loved doing things for people and I felt I was very generous with our employees. But the reality was that was all driven a lot by ego and fear. And I, those are the words I, I hope you understand. It wasn't that I wasn't a nice guy. But everything I did, looking back, this all came in my period of time or between that and time in Nerium, where I evaluated my life and looked at what was, I, what was I doing this for? And I looked at, after I lost everything and I was heartbroken by life, as Patty often uses that term that I love so much because that's how I felt, I was thinking, what was it that drove me? Where did everybody go? What, what was I doing? What was the difference I was supposed to make back then? And I recognized that for a lot of reasons, you know, getting back to childhood and beyond, um, I had things that were driving me based on fear that I, I never, you know, whenever we broke a record with Homes and Land for launching a magazine, I always had to break the next record for fear of not looking good, of possibly not winning the trip or the award or the national contest and what that might look like. I was driven to the point of exhaustion. I mean, I used to have people that worked for me uh, tell me that they would get a call from um, Lori, who actually 
uh, ran, ran my business and actually still owns the homes lands today. And she would tell him, don't worry, you don't have to answer Don's call at Sunday, uh, Sunday at 10 or 11 at night. Because I would call him. I didn't even think about time. I just went with it. Point is, I was just driven. But I was driven by what I see today is things that were negative energy, negative emotions. And I didn't even recognize it. So I come into Nerium. Silver asked me that question. And I would never forget it because I, inside I felt the feeling. I just didn't know what it was. And I knew I wanted to make a difference and win again. So what ended up happening was... I started going out with Nerium and taking action. I had a lot of influence, which Silver also told me that I needed to have, which he knew I had, and I, more influence I knew I had with other people that were coming in the business, utilizing uh, the fact that I was involved to actually build their businesses, which was a great thing. I, it happened uh, to be very beneficial for everybody. But the reality was my personal confidence and my drive was at an all-time low. The only reason I believe I really continued on with this business is because of the belief that uh, Silver and uh, at the time Brittany had with me. She still has belief in me. I just mean where, where that thing was at the time. But uh, <laughs> sorry. But anyway, um, uh, so I, I was driven by wanting to please them and to actually their vision, what they saw. And I started going out with Nerium and pursuing the business aggressively. Things took off amazingly, just like they can today. Every time a country opens, every time we bring on a new product, every time somebody comes aboard without – uh, mental blockages and they come in I can mention names I don't want to mention any names but Aaron Hall comes to mind because somebody comes in that's a uh, that's a dental hygienist never been in the industry and blows the doors off the entire business because she has no preconceived you know notions of what will or won't work she comes aboard and runs with it but at that time that's what we were like we just got went to work sharing this bottle that uh, Jeff Olson said was gonna create a billion dollar company and as a result of that my business blew up and a lot of you watching this, I don't know what level you're at. You might be brand new in the business. You might be a, uh, you know, a five-star. I, I don't know. But I do know this, that whatever level you're at, where we were at at the time, was a place where we got to two-star very quickly, like in nine months to a year. Uh, the income levels were going way up, and it became very comfortable. And the process of going out and, and traveling and talking and sharing and the recognition was all there. The team was there. And the focus can get shifted a bit. And that's what ended up happening. I, I couldn't figure out where that drive was that I had back at Homes and Land. And I recognized that ultimately that it just wasn't the same motivation. I, I didn't have that same kind of drive. I, I, I mean, I would have a run for it, but I couldn't find it. And I was like, what's going on? What, where's that definite purpose? I'd hear the leaders in Nerium talk about definite purpose, vision, goals, dreams. I always believed in that stuff, having a plan, working the plan. Uh, it's just I learned that stuff early on in this industry before I was in this business, even though I never made money in the previous company. Uh, the fact is I learned a lot of that by coming to this, and they're all the same stuff, same principles I knew worked, but I was having a challenge figuring it out and how to apply it in a way that would drive me to the levels I wanted to be at. So I, I kind of like to point out that a lot of times when you're watching a leader, you think, geez, if I could just get to that level or that star ranking or whatever it is that you think they've just arrived. Like they're satisfied and there's a saying I've heard a few times using your that there's a devil at every level. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you're, I mean, if you're brand new and somebody's at the director iPad level, you think, gosh, if I could just get there, if I get, just get to senior Lexus level, if I could just get to NMD. And those are all great positions to get to. But just understand if somebody's been there, maybe drop back a bit because of inactivity or focus or whatever it is, um, they want to go to a different level. That's where I was at. I was sitting at two star, um, still am, but I was sitting there. It goes back a few years ago, I mean, excuse me, um, for a few years at that level. And the last year, about this time, I really started looking at things. And I, I ended up getting a book called uh, Outwitting the Devil that Mark Smith sent out to all of us national marketing directors a couple of three Christmases ago. And it sat on the shelf. And I read Napoleon Hill. I thought, well, that's supposed to be a book I missed. And in that book, he started talking about, I started reading this around uh, February, March about the, the concept of drifting and the idea that you have these different segments of your life and that if you're not clear in those areas and have definite purpose in the different areas of your life, at least this is the way I took it because of other areas of my life that I've experienced this, that you're going to drift. That's the terminology he uses in the book. And this is written back in the 30s and was kind of hid away for 70 years for fear of re retribution from society because of the advanced ideas he had. But I, I remember reading this book and all kinds of things started flooding me. I began to understand, I, I got this clarity like, oh my gosh, I'm really not driven by the things that I used to be driven by, that I really wanted, I truly wanted to make a difference 
in people's lives. I wanted to understand where people lived at from a fear basis and help them to overcome those kind of feelings. And I, and I, then I kept on looking at if they could overcome it and they had no, if they had clarity and blockage, uh, I mean, clarity of what they wanted and blockages removed, what kind of possibilities were possible? And I, and I began to really look at myself and I will talk about myself here a little bit, but not to talk about me, but it's because it's my story and it's how I communicate best. It's the way I, I do it. So please apply it to yourself uh, because I've had this conversation with multiple people, but I began to go inside and started looking at the different areas. And uh, one of the things I'll show you afterwards up here, but we talk about the different areas he talked about is definite purpose. And, you know, and I used to do the vision boards and I would put the cars up and, and the, uh, you know, the houses and the pools and the vacations. And those are motivating, but I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. You know, it just doesn't really do much for me. But if somebody tells me that whatever I talked to them about helped them break through something, that helped them to get clarity, that cleared away something, and they were able to move forward, that to me is a bigger drive than anything I can possibly explain because it's been my life experience that that's how I've lived my life. That's been my spiritual walk. That's everything that's happened in my life has happened as a result of that. So that I began to get clarity on a new vision, a new purpose, more from a heart-led position than a materialistic position. Not that there's anything wrong with that, by the way, guys. I mean, I always joke with Patty and Puya and uh, Silver and some of my younger friends, you know, that I haven't met anybody yet that's cried about a, a, Lam a Lambo except those three guys, but that's not true, okay? <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but, you know, younger people generally can be driven by some of those things, but I guess we get a little older and a few scars and you end up uh, looking at life a little bit differently. Not saying that as a blanket statement, but bottom line, I started to feel things differently. And I looked at another magazine I was featured in early in, in Nerium, and the guy next to me, Danny, he's you know up to five star. And I'm like thinking, why is he there and I'm here? And why is you know I have these great leaders in our team, Lisa Cox at five star, and I'm where I'm, you know. And it wasn't so much of a comparison thing, but looking at what is the difference? What what is the difference? It's the same exact business that Patty just described. We have this incredible opportunity. I mean. I remember meeting Jeff Olson the first time and he said, hey, this bottle can take us to a billion dollars. And I believed him. Breakthrough products, exclusivity. I mean, I, I mean, Patty was going through these different companies that have been around for 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 years, close to 60 years, and the cycles they've gone through and, and what all that's happened there. And I'm looking at this thinking, Nerium is going to be a not only a billion dollar company, I have no doubt they're going to, we're going to be a five, 10, if you have any belief like I do in Jeff Olson, I don't put anybody in a pedestal. Sorry, Jeff, if you're watching this, but I don't put anybody in a pedestal, but I do, well, he, kind of him, sort of, <laughs> from a business point of view. I just believe in his vision and his integrity and character and who he is. I've just seen it played out in my experience with this business. And so when I look at that guy, I think about a $20 billion company. Who's to say it won't be? But what happens in between that space of where we are now in $20 billion are people like you and I come aboard, have a dream of vision, clarity of purpose, like Aaron Hall, decide to act on it, utilize the systems that were created by our CEO and founder, Jeff Olson, and ultimately the slight edge philosophy, and go out and apply themselves. But if they don't have clarity of vision, and they trip themselves up because of character defects or things in their lives that, that cause them to, as Napoleon Hill says in that book, to drift, then they ultimately never get uh, the vision that they perceived or that they wanted. So to me, when I looked at this, I began to see that the only difference between me the, and, and the only difference between you and the person that is not in the business yet, that maybe has got in six months ago, perhaps, or somebody is going to get in a year from now, and the fact that they're going to go three, four, or five star, they're going to go NMD, they're going to go, you know, whatever level it's going to be, maybe even international, gold international, the only difference is right here, just exactly what Patty talked about, just right here. And then followed by the actions that are driven by the philosophies that happen right here. So to me, I had this clarity over the summer, actually, because I ended up, when I was reading this book, I decided to move to Orange County because I realized that I was somewhat comfortable where I was. And I ultimately kind of couch surfed with Puya and Brittany and kind of did that for a little period of time. And and got myself very, very clear. One of the things that came out of this, I started looking at different areas of my life and getting clarity on them because this is where it really breaks down. If you just write a vision statement, and the vision statement is kind of what you want, and you do it in, a, in an I am format, kind of like an affirmation, one or two page uh, vision statement, that's awesome. It's, it's 10, I mean, it's 
97, 98 percent of them people never even do that. But one of the things my experience has shown me in my life experience is looking at Outwitting the Devil book, when he talks about it, I'll go through this in a minute, but up here we have health and fitness, finances, spiritual, relationships and family, uh, Nerium could be, maybe another category, whatever category, uh, he talks about him in the book in different ways, but ultimately I was looking at these different areas that are so important and I, and I looked at how I was drifting all the time in these different areas. That I'd get purposeful, then I'd fall off. And I'd get purposeful in another area, and I'd fall off. And ultimately, what would happen with the feelings that I would have associated with that would transfer over into self-confidence, self-worth, sense of uh, belief in my own word to myself, whether it was working out, whether it was the food I was eating. And I just was looking at this, and I began to realize that, that uh, I was 100% responsible for where I was at. That was the reality that came. And as I started getting calls from people on the team, I didn't know what to, you know, that, hey, I need help, I feel stuck at this level, whatever it is. I started getting into my experience and talking about this. And this is where Patty, you know, I was talking to Patty about this one area of health and how getting clear and, and, and getting into the juice drink. Some of you may have seen me drinking the, uh, the pure juice drink I was drinking and pretty much not going vegan, not getting into that kind of thing, but, you know, very much changing my diet away from processed things and certain types of foods and cheeses and things and getting clear in that area how it started to spill over in other areas. So I got a definite purpose specifically re related to my health and fitness, took action on it because I was clear specifically on that area. Okay, I got a definite purpose. I knew what I wanted in that area. Then I thought about it, and I, again, as I'm cheering with people, and people are calling me, and I'm, tra I'm transitioning this to their life, it really comes down to you know going into each one of the areas of their life. And I would ask them about Miriam, do they believe it's one of the multiple billions? I would talk about Slide Edge philosophy, uh, Jeff Olson's book, The Slide Edge, that talks about uh, you know his, his, basically, I'll just tell you this, this book was written because Jeff Olson went away to a retreat in Scottsdale, Arizona, I guess back in the 90s, or early 2000s sometime, and frustration with people like you and I just decided, why can't they just do what we lay out to them? He wrote the notes for the Slide Edge, became a best-selling book, and it's pretty much legendary, and ultimately, our systems come from that. And I'm, I'm looking at that and talking to people as well as looking at myself, I think it's an incredible company, breakthrough products, amazing things happening, all the things Patty talked about, I mean, that, that we don't even talk about now with somebody, whether or not you're going to work or not. Now it's a matter of what are they going to do with it. The second area is the systems that drive that. And I, I often refer to a franchise model when it comes to that. And we very much have that type of model. And that was what my business was previously. And some of you might have heard of the book uh, called E-Myth by Michael Gerber. He talks about a franchise model. We have the best of the best of the best. So you have the products that are breakthrough, medically backed, scientifically proven, exclusive. You have the systems created by the millionaire maker, the individual in the industry, that the direct sales associations, every single one of them that Patty mentioned, go to a conference each year and listen to Jeff Olson talk about his vision, views, what he thinks of the industry, what's happening. That's our guy. So ultimately, when it comes down to it, when I'm talking to somebody, I'm looking at my own information. It's like, well, what's the difference between where I'm at and where somebody else is at? And it's what I do. What's creating that is what's going on here. And ultimately, the vision and definite purpose I had. So again, breaking these areas down, those different areas, health, fitness, finance, spiritual, relationship, Miriam, and so on, is the first column I started looking at. And I did this as a result of what I recognized that there were some blockages. And in order to get clarity, because if nothing, if you had complete clarity of vision and purpose, think about this when you're watching this, complete clarity of vision, there was no gray area whatsoever in every area of your life, including Miriam and you had this system available, and you had the, the complete belief that you could accomplish it because you had that clarity, what would hold you back and what would cause you not to be able to go to NMD, three star, four, five star, whatever it is you wanted to do? Nothing, absolutely nothing. So to me, I started working on some things that I found in my past with some other things I'm involved with that gave me clarity. And part of that is, is, uh, is blo clearing blockages. And so. Um, one of the examples we have down below, I'll show you afterwards, but it's kind of my drawing of a fire hose. I won't try to, to show you, but it's a fire hose because this image came to my mind that if you have your dreams and goals, you have a fire hose, which everybody can imagine with immense power, huge power that holds your dreams, goals, vision, 
and you had a fire hose that was blocked in the middle because you had not cleared away certain things or had clarity on it, how powerful would that fire hose be? How clear would that vision be? Of course it wouldn't be. So what I did, I went to work and I started, I listed out, number one, health and fitness. And I said, what's showing up there right now? Well, when I wrote this originally, I was about 15, 20 pounds overweight. I just recently saw a photo of myself of April of last, last year when I did this that, that traumatized me. I was like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. That was me. And then I, I see the photos today where I got into the clear vision of where I wanted to be. I Ultimately, the second area, I'll get into in a second, was uh, the feelings associated with being overweight, uh, the, the feelings of uh, pants not fitting, uh, what it felt like to not have the confidence to, you know, plan on going to the gym, but instead having the coffee cake and, and deciding to do it tomorrow. I had a lot of those days, believe me. And ultimately, I recognized that I'm 100% responsible for those choices. 100%. So when I knew what it would look like, I knew what it felt like. And then according to Outwit and the Devil, that those feelings will transfer to other areas of your life. That's kind of the message. That if I wasn't clear in that area, and I didn't have the blockage is cleared out. And then third column here was the clear vision of where I wanted to go. Now that's important because again, you gotta look, it's easy. Where are you at right now? If you're not happy in any one of those areas, health, family, finance, you know, relationship, near him, whatever it is, you just look at what it is. Is You just write out in a paragraph about what it is. The second column is you look at what you feel about it. The third column is going out Five years from today, using David Bird's analogy, I often use three years because that was taught to me by a coach that works for me. From today, looking back, if in that one area, if everything were to be exactly how you want it to be, what would it be like? Well, I wrote out my, my body fat percentage, my workout schedule, what I look like, um, what it felt like, how my clothes fit. I laid all that out exactly how I'd want it. And then ultimately, I put what would that feel like? Now, that's important because the feelings associated with a clear vision are very, very important. Uh, I just know this, that the best way I can describe this to you is many people watching this could watch a, a call uh, or maybe listen to a song uh, or maybe smell something or whatever that brings them back to a time, a sensory time, that the emotions you feel them, and it's, sometimes it's not positive, sometimes they're not positive emotions, and sometimes they're incredibly positive emotions. It might be something where you were you had huge success as an athlete or as a parent or a or a maybe in business or whatever. There was a period of time the particular song was associated with that time, and you resonate with that song as being a powerful time in your life. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So you want to take that song, associate it with the current feelings that you have, in addition to the vision you have, and that's how you connect feelings in a stronger way, in addition to visuals and that kind of thing. So I went through and I did this in each one of the areas. In finance, I did it. I mean, if you knew the money I made in Nerium, it's almost unbelievable to this date how long I've been in. And how much I saved is also unbelievable, not in a positive way, okay? I'm really good at making and in the past, been really good at spending. I got that fixed as well. I got somebody to, to help me with that area. But it was only by looking at the clarity of vision and what I didn't want, where I was at, who was responsible was me. What was it feeling like? How, how I felt about that and how it affected me. Third column was three years out looking back, could be five years. Um, what specifically I wanted, that could be like a paragraph, a page, doesn't have to be a book, paragraph, page. And then the last one, what would that feel like to have my finances how I wanted, to have a half million dollars in the bank, to have a house that was a multi-million dollar house, um, you know, with three quarters of the mortgage paid off. And, to have all my debt paid and, and be, you know, living a certain way and traveling a certain way and donating a certain way and being participating in time and money in a certain way. That's where that evolved to. Came associated with that feeling and now that became very clear. Went to another one in the relationship area. I won't even get into that. I'll just say that uh, it's amazing things can happen if you get clear vision of well, what you don't want but also what you want. That's important. Uh, the other one is Nerium. You did the same thing there. So if you get the picture here, guys, what it is is just breaking it down, looking at where you're at, owning it 100%, owning the feelings associated with it. Now you can burn that first and second column as far as I'm concerned because you should never look at it again. As of this moment, as of this recording, those times are past. They no longer exist in the present. So now we're going forward with a vision of where we want to go and a feelings associated with that, and it's got to be clearly written out and defined. Now I'll mention this. In each one of these areas, you can also, uh, when it talks about the feeling portion, you can turn those into an affirmation. 
um, which I have done, you know, just making an affirmative statement and then an action plan associated with it specifically in those areas, which is kind of from a Hal Elrod book that was that um, Miracle Morning that uh, some leaders on our team brought around and it just kind of added to this for me. And so I've laid that out specifically and it gives me a gauge a little bit of, of exactly where to go. On top of that, what happened now, this is important, is that I ended up being able to create a vision statement like I've never done before because I had the clarity of all these areas of my life of what it is that I wanted and I was able to put it into one, for me it was a two page vision statement. David Bird uh, teaches one page, but I, I don't think he would be upset if he did two as long as you had clarity of vision. And that's what I actually did. I created a two page vision statement reflecting exactly what I had in those broken down areas. The thing I do on a daily basis now is everything that happens has to do with me reviewing that, the action plan associated with the, the vision, the feelings, and then the affirmations and the larger vision statement. And then ultimately the action plan associated with that comes back to the slight edge. Because when you know specifically what your vision is and you have affirmations associated with it that you're continually feeding yourself and an action plan specifically geared towards it, now that's called the law of intention. You have, you have intentionality in what you're doing. At least that's what I call the law, okay? I mean, I just made that up. I'll, I'll frame that and put my name on it and say it's my, my saying. But it's, it's, a, it's really intentionality. So everything I do, everything runs through the scope of how does this meet my vision? Now, I want to make this point very clear if any of you are on this uh, that are perfectionists like me. One of the things that I can be, I want to say that's past tense, uh, is that you know when I was explaining this to Patty, and Patty was pretty fired up about the concept because I was flowing freely with it, and I'm talking to him about this incredible thing and you know this juicing and this vegetables and getting off dairy and processed carbs, and he's like, man, this is incredible stuff. And I recognized as I was telling him this, I was eating this big giant peanut butter cookie from uh, Whole Foods. <laughs> it's a weakness, okay? And so I was laughed at myself. I told him that. I imagine you remember that, Patty, because this is not about perfection. It's, a, it's about having a gauge. And if you went back and you had Jeff Olson were to pop on here, he would probably say something to the effect that it has to do with those decisions you make every single day. And it starts with every day having clarity and vision, purpose, associating your feelings with it, having affirmations, having an action plan, and putting it to work in a way that you can actually see your life begin to transform over time. See, we know, as Patty reviewed here, and I'm about to wrap up with a final little segment, we know where Nirium's going. I mean, we know that's going to happen. I don't even want to really say this. There's quite a few people on this call, probably close to 500. I don't even know four or 500 um, on this webinar. But I just want to say that we know, and I believe, that Jeff Olson, this is going to be a multi-billion dollar, five, 10, 15, 20 billion dollar company that's never been seen before. I believe that 100% in my heart. I believe we have the most incredible systems ever introduced to the direct sales network marketing industry by far. Jeff Olson's systems, other leadership input, and ultimately has created what we have as far as the franchise type of system, okay? The third thing comes down to you, me, getting clarity of vision purpose of where we want to go in our life so we can match all of those up into a very clear channel, fire hose, whatever you want to call it. We use that on some of the marketing. And if you picture that fire hose blocked, we just clear away the blockages now and get clear vision. And now you can go pursue your dreams and goals. So in relation to Nerium, what I can tell you is anything you want to accomplish here, the past doesn't matter. Okay. You need to understand that if you're watching this today and you've been in the business for six months, six days or three years, and you haven't hit the senior brand partner level, it does not matter. If you've been in the business that long, you should want to be a national marketing director and you're not there, it does not matter. Jeff Olson often talks about he can't wait for the day 10 years out when the person just like you, just like me, that stayed with the process, went through the personal development, took total responsibility for where they were in every area of their life, including Nerium, and decided to make the changes that accounted for over time a compound effect that led them to the stage of national marketing director at 10 years. Do you think that person's gonna get an ovation that's gonna bring the house down, the city down, wherever we're at, when there's 150,000 people, they even hold that baby call, Sam? Just standing ovation for that person? I mean, I don't say you should wait 10 years, but the point is that if they can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Patty, Silver, Puya, Brittany, all my, I have a lot of close friends in the business. I'm leaving somebody out, I apologize. But I'm just saying so many people that I love and respect 
that have accomplished this and overcome great odds in order to accomplish it. So the last thing I want to touch on, I'll wrap up with this, is that when looking at this, I thought applying it directly to the business, getting honest with myself about it. And if Diana, if you're watching this, I need you to come in here to help me with uh, the Vanna White portion, um, <clears throat> if I could. But here's, here's what I wanted to, to point out. The 10 core commitments, which are, uh, can you hold this up real quick? Um, the 10 core commitments, I'm going to have her hold up this up real closely. Can you see that? Okay. Nice and close. Okay. What we listed down was the 10 core commitments. This is our model. This is our system. Okay. The 10 core commitments, what you want to do is just own where you're at. It doesn't matter. When I ask somebody, sorry about the screen there, where they're at with this and they end up telling me, step back just a foot. There we go. They end up telling me the first thing they do is they start apologizing for where they're at in the last 90 days. Okay, last year, whatever you want to put on here that works for you. That's not what we're looking for. In fact, once you write your life story and you break it down in those areas, you don't apologize for where you were. It just is what it is based on choices you made and I made and we were at where we're at. And now it's a new day. So now you list out where you're at in each one of the 10 core. You write a number next to what... Uh, a scale of 1 to 10, what you give yourself as a rating, 1 to 10, whatever it would be. And you go all the way through in the ones that can apply that you can measure on a weekly basis. And for me, I came out at the time I did this, being totally candid with you at the time I did this back in, I think it was like in June or July, I had somewhere in the neighborhood of like a, a, a 6 or 5 or whatever it was on different areas. You know, I was up on personal development down in this area. I mean, my exposures weren't where they needed to be based on what I thought I needed to do. And Another area might be, you know, I missed a regional. I don't know. I mean, it might surprise you, but sometimes, you know, uh, things can happen. So point is, whatever it is for you, you rate yourself where you've been. You get a total. And the goal here is not perfection to get a, you know, 10, 10, 10, 10, all the way down. You divide the number by 10 because there's 10 core, and you get a 10 rating, which is 100%. That's just, I don't even know if Jeff Olson, Mark Smith themselves, whoever else would actually hit that. The point is, David Bird teaches us leaders, if we hit 70% of our goal, whatever our 100% of our goal would be, then we are going to receive 100% of all the things we ever wanted to accomplish. And he's told me multiple uh, stories about that. So if you take this area and you look at, uh, you know, for instance, commit to two exposures a day, you actually do it, and you've been hitting maybe a three on that level, it's okay. Pass is the past. You put it down here and you total it up. The next, the week one is first column two, three, four, and five, and you start measuring this weekly based on the fact of what you're going to do this next week, and you actually go out, and maybe your goal is to get to a five or a six. I mean, honestly, if you can do two a day, that's fantastic, but if you're moving the needle forward, I'm telling you, things are going to go forward, and you're going to have great success. We, of course, want to hit all the basics at the, uh, at the minimum of a seven or above on those levels because we're going to then accomplish 100% of our goals. The point behind this is that if you get active and you look at your track record of what you're doing, you're going to have a lot more success knowing where you were and looking at where you want to go. And you have a gauge every week. You start over and you go after it. My goal for a lot of this NMDs is three, four, and five exposures a day. We might have a little bit different number than you have that you, you want to run if you're at a lower level of the business or if you want to run hard, you can do that. We teach two a day. But ultimately, I'm just saying that's one example. Another area is personal development. Another area is, is – um, you know, attending weekly trainings or uh, market parties or, or real results parties just to make sure you're going through all the 10 core because this is our system for Narium. You could take the same idea in relation to working out, finance, you know, whatever area and actually break it down and have an action plan related to that, but we're just talking about 10 core right here. So can I go ahead and uh, have you pull that one up? Wait, put this one closer. Put this really close. I want to show you guys well, this really close so you can see kind of how it is, okay? Okay, let's show another one. And we'll, real quickly, we'll wrap it up with this. So the most important thing, let's just do this one so you see what that one was done, okay? Just lay down. So I want to just close by saying this. First of all, it's an honor to be able to share some of this stuff. I mean, when Patty first said, hey, we got to do a call, we got to do a webinar, whatever on this, um, I guess just old reaction is like, what am I going to tell them? Uh, and it's just ultimately the experience I've had with this is that as I've been talking to people, sharing this with people, it's really quite simple again. Just get, break down your, your life in the areas that are important to you. Uh, where you've been, what it feels like. It's okay, it doesn't matter. You draw a line, burn that stuff. If you don't like it, keep it if you like it. The next column is three to three years out, looking back, where would you want to be uh, exactly if life was 
had no limits. The fourth column is what would that feel like? And if you want to do affirmations and a larger vision statement off of that, fantastic. We know where Nerium is going. We know we have the incredible systems. It's matching those things up in a way that allows you, who's watching this webinar right now, not only to affect the lives for yourself, but the lives of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. Whatever dream goals you have, it doesn't matter what they are, they can be accomplished because we have a vehicle very few people have ever uh, had the opportunity to be sitting in the seats, as Jeff Olson would say, that we're sitting in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap it up with that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, I'm gonna just pass on that. We'll do that a little later because it's, it's diversion. I think it's a good close. Just to say uh, thank you and Patty, as always, for being the leader. Uh, I wanna thank uh, so many people, but I've just not the time to do it right here. And, and now it's the manifestation of all this and making it happen in all of our worlds to take this great group and uh, company on to levels never seen before in this industry. So with that, Patty, I, I don't know if you're available to take back over. Uh, appreciate it. and. We'll take it from there. Awesome, awesome Don. Don. Thank you so much for putting all that together. That was That's awesome. awesome. We have got yeah, so, so many people so here and commenting, commenting on how much value you're doing today. And so, so, so those of you who are here with us, this live event will be broadcast on the YouTube page. Uh, you can find that at any time. You can share with your own That's kind of what I Thank you for being on your Sunday. Sunday. For those of you who shared this, I know over 100 people shared this on social media. We will be doing the drawing today, and I will be sending you this free book uh, for sharing this broadcast. So, again, we got a tremendous amount of information. Don, thank you so much for your heart, your transparency, and really just drawing all that out for all of us. So, with that being said, guys and gals, we look forward to seeing you at the next big events. St. Louis, Missouri is literally 90-plus days away. And so your business can absolutely change from today to buy St. Louis. So where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? You know, getting that mental mind block out of your way so you can go out there and take it to the next level is where it is all at. So have a great rest, uh, rest of your Sunday. Let's close the month of January with an absolute bang. And as we run into March, it is the March to the Arch. So we look forward to seeing you in St. Louis on the next webinar. So take care, take charge, dream big, and live very, very happy. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.